Hello and welcome to Warsword Conquest Orc Edition. It's been a long time since Warsword Conquest has appeared on my channel and that's actually through no fault of the mod itself because I have heard some extremely good things. Let's start a new game straight off. So, <laughs> what? How, how can I start this? How can I start talking about the various improvements, changes, features, and so on that have been implemented into this amazing mod. And if you want to check it out, by the way, there is a link in the description, as there would probably always be most of the time. Anyway, so let's do this. Okay, so first of all, look at this. Look at how many choices we have. Obviously, uh, you know, Warsword Conquest, you did tend to have quite a few choices beforehand anyway, but there are uh, maybe more. I'm actually not entirely sure if there are more than there used to be. But yeah, you can see here you've got Beastman, Chaos, Saurus, uh, Night Goblin, Skeleton, Skaven, Halfling, Skink, and Vampire, and everything else in between. So for me personally right now, I'm actually going to be selecting Skaven. Now the reason why I'm selecting Skaven is because I want to create a character by the name of Slive of Skavenblight. He is one of my oldest characters in Warsword Conquest, and I really, really want to play with him. And we are going to be using, uh, well, we're going to be, uh, well, we're going to be saying, shall we say, that our father was a Gisele runner, because this is a uh, gunner kind of character, and that's kind of what I want to go for here. We're also going to be going for a Warpstone Miner. You can read this flavor text if you so desire. I personally feel like it is a very good idea if you do that because uh, they put in a lot of effort to this as well. A Warpstone Miner is what we're going to go for. You were a Warpstone Miner working one of the least profitable mines near the mountains on the Bretonian border. You mined refined Warpstone, which is far less dangerous than the unrefined kind, and you managed to go your entire time in the mine without gaining any mutations or unusual effects, much to your disappointment. You often spend days without finding anything, and when you did, the master would snatch your find away as soon as he could. Then, as you grew, life changed, as it always does. All right, so we're going to be, a, uh, wow, we're going to be a gunsmith, obviously. That's what we're going to be. I mean, technically, you could play as a poison maker or you could be a weapon specialist as well. I'm not entirely sure what this actually changes, but I'm going to be playing as a gunsmith here. The Skaven excel in making firearms. They te their technology is even more advanced than the dwarves. And they even managed to use the power of the Warpstone to make the weapon even more powerful. Their crown jewel of the mass-produced guns is the Gisele, which has been known to pierce Imperial tanks with a good shot. You spend your time making and testing them for Clan Skyr. But soon everything changed, and you decide to strike out on your own. Alright, so I have no idea actually what any of these stats do now, or shall we say what any of these selections do. I know that Personal Revenge, I believe, gives you strength. That might actually be a good idea to go for strength. I'm not entirely sure right now. Uh, we might want to go for Wonderlust. We could go for uh, Lust for Money and Power as well. Uh, yeah, Lust for Money and Power. We might as well go for that. I, I don't know. Technically, you can check the Warband wiki if you want to see, um, you know, the, the, the specifics regarding those choices and what you want to go for if you want to min-max super hardcore. So I'm going to say allow me to quit without saving just because and there we go we're going to be gaining a robe and a spear and I believe we are going to get a gun as well or at least I would hope that we're going to get a gun and what I'm going to do is first of all we are going to try and increase our agility as much as possible because here's the thing what we are going to need is a huge amount of firearm skill we're going to need so much firearm skill it's going to be extremely important for us and um, obviously it's really good to go for strength as well because you're going to need iron flesh a massive amount of as well however we're not in this particular video slash series obviously i'm not entirely sure if it's going to be a series just yet but i thought hey it's about time we return to this amazing feat of warband modding it really is just incredible it is one of the best feature rich mods if not the best actually because of the uh, the sheer amount of stuff that has been added to this you'll you'll see you'll see if you haven't seen anything about warsword conquest recently uh then you'll be blown away so i'm gonna go for intelligence 12 and then agility 10 
The reason for this is because I want to go for some more Weapon Master right there. I'm thinking I might actually like to go for Athletics as well, but first of all, what I really want to go for is Pathfinding. I want to go for four in Pathfinding. I know, I know. A bit of a bit of an annoying skill, to be honest, but I feel like it's kind of necessary. Now, we have two... Uh, well, actually, this is not new, but this is a new, uh, a new skill to... Mm, shall we say uh, base game warband enjoyers and or uh, regular regular mods because willpower increases your chances of appearing in subsequent battle phases after being wounded in battle and it allows casters to focus their willpower and gain casting bonus on the next spell every two points will increase a dwarf's magic resistance and every point will increase your right to rule by two so this is actually a very very good skill if you are playing as a dwarf obviously because it's going to give you a benefit in pretty much every respect and obviously if you're playing a caster as well then, of course, you have all these other things like man um, mana control, magic power, magic control as well. We are not going to be focusing on any of these in this particular video because I'm a rat. And, uh, well, I mean, yeah, they do use magic sometimes, but uh, my character right now doesn't. So that's not what we're going to do. But I am going to be putting some points into Iron Flesh right here. I might put another point into Athletics. Maybe some points in Riding Skill. I don't, I'm don't. i not entirely sure if we're really going to be using Riding Skill that much. And I'm also thinking about looting at this point too. Because if we can actually make a huge amount of money, at least early on, it's going to be very, very important for us to do so. Because uh, here's the thing. I remember having a really, really hard time actually making money. So I'm... A bit worried about that. Anyway, Slythe of Skaven Blight lives once again. There he is. Wonderful. All right, and we're just going to be going with the default here. Obviously, as you can see, they've done an amazing job, as always, on the on the uh, the cosmetic side of things. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to the environments as well. So start at Skaven Blight in the Skaven Underworld. And here we are. Yes, absolutely amazing already. Boom. This is it. Look at how massive the map is as well. And obviously we've got the lizard men down here. We've got the high elves. We've got the, uh, uh, the, the dark elves. Yeah, these are the dark elves if I recall correctly. I, I, I spent a lot of time in this mod as well. I played a goblin... Um, Goblin, what, what was he using again? He was using like a ball on chain or something like that. Yeah, I think he was using a ball on chain. Absolutely wrecking every single thing that he came across. Super, super fun. Uh, super fun character. And I'm going to be recruiting every single Skaven slave right here. So I'm going to be spending 120 gold, which is quite significant. Now, here's the thing. I have a spear. I don't really care for this spear that much. So I'm actually going to be selling that as soon as I can. I have a long barrel pistol as well. As you can see, that does 77 piercing damage. Um, in comparison to the flintlock pistol, which does 70. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm probably going to be selling the flintlock pistol as soon as I can. I also have this fighting pick here as well. The fighting pick is not really going to be something that I am going to focus too hardcore on. Anyway, the, f the amount of features. Okay, the amount of features in the mod. So we've got these guys, right? We've got these things right here called dungeons. There are dungeons in almost every single um, every single location that you can think of. So for example, there's a dungeon over there. There's a dungeon here in the south of Skaven territory. There's a dungeon in the desert over there. There is a dungeon over here in Lizardman territory. You get the point. There are dungeons everywhere, all over the world. And what are dungeons? Well, dungeons are kind of like these delving opportunities. So basically, what, what does that mean? Well, it means that you can go into these and you will face a random amount of enemies and a random uh, random layout, basically. So when you go in, you're not going to know what kind of layout you are going to see. And what's going to happen is enemies will attack you and you don't know what kind of enemies you're going to fight. And there is actually a hidden chest on each level of the dungeon. And each dungeon is randomly generated in a certain respect, as in... Uh, it could be a medium dungeon, could be a short dungeon, could be a long dungeon. So you don't know how many levels there are going to be when you actually go in for the first time. So there's a huge amount to be, um, to be you know, either worried about or, um, you know, you're just going to be like, what, really? That's amazing. So cool, you know, sort of thing. Anyway, this guy, I would love to be able to hire him, but he is way too expensive right now. 
So we're going to have to do something about that. So basically, the best thing that I can think of to do right now is I'm just going to sell these things right here. Obviously, I've got some grain with me right here as well. But the best thing for me to do is to try and find some tasks. Now, eh, I know, I know. It, it sounds it sounds very um, lackadaisical, you know, sort of like uh, not, not very exciting. However, that is kind of necessary at the moment. I mean, you can see here, here, here is a uh, companion, but unfortunately he will not join us because we need 300, unfortunately. There is an Ogre Gorger right here and he'll join for 1700. Ogres are absolutely insane, by the way. They're really, really cool. Okay, I'm looking for one of my companions. No, have you heard of anyone? Uh, Gorthor the Beast Lord is looking for mercenaries. Uh, oh, he's been. Oh, he's worried about a hideout. Oh, okay. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Maybe that's a good idea. All right. So where is he? That's the question. I think I probably need to find him. There's also a training field here as well, by the way. So if you want to, and I'd highly recommend doing this, um, I recommend going in and literally just attacking some of your um, attacking some of your people, uh, because if you do this, you're going to have the ability to level them up really really nicely and when you level them up well it's pretty obvious what you get from that you get some very very strong um very very strong people uh th th yeah they did actually level up okay so one of them leveled up as you can see clan rats okay now this is actually quite funny because uh, anyone that's really really knowledgeable about warhammer fantasy lore you're gonna know that skaven are not particularly strong and yeah, you know, this guy, <laughs> as you can quite clearly tell, he's only got 43 HP. Yeah, this, you know, there's, there's no difference here. You know, he's not particularly strong. However, seeing these guys in combat, they actually are quite resilient. And you wouldn't think that they'd be so resilient, but they actually are. Or at least that's what I've seen so far. Anyway, let's just see if we can actually do something here. Oh, Chaos Zealots. Okay, shall we fight some? Why not? Let's let's fight some and see what actually happens here. Because obviously, um, I haven't even shown you the full extent of every single feature that is in the mod, by the way, yet. Because dungeons are just the start of it. But there's magic. There are sieges, obviously, that are fundamentally different from what you'd normally expect to see in a, uh, a warband experience, of course. And apart from that, the amount of mods that have been implemented into it are staggering the amount of sub mods shall we say so i'll show you the camp menu and the reports menu and all that wonderful stuff after this and look at my gun oh i'm missing oh that's great oh i love that tradition we yes, as we love that tradition don't we every single shot uh, every single two shots apparently oh that's great i was kind of hoping that i'd be able to actually hit something there we go we finally hit something i'm very very surprised actually that it took me so long to hit but okay and there is, there we go, okay, take him out. We are doing loads of damage as well, by the way. And obviously, we've got to bear in mind that this is not Bannerlord, so enemies are going to start with quite low HP. Most of the time, they're going to have 40 to 50, maybe 60 if they're lucky. And here's the new, ba here's the new battle victory screen as well, by the way. I love this. Uh, I love this screen, by the way. I think this is super, super cool. And you can access the items on the ground. Obviously, there's some really, really amazing stuff here. I mean, technically, this is not actually amazing, but it's amazing for me because I'm actually going to be able to sell this for um, maybe quite a bit, actually. Maybe quite a bit. I I'm not entirely sure how much it's actually going to sell for, but hopefully it's going to be nice. Ah, there's the guy. There we go. All right. So this is the fellow that I actually wanted to speak to, and I can even join his army. So you can actually freelance if you want to, but I'd highly, highly, highly recommend not doing that if you are a different race from the um, from the you know the race of the vassal or the uh, the lord. Because let's face it, um, well, a beast man's armor is going to look particularly weird on a rat or a human or whatever. Anyway, do you have any tasks for me? We've heard reports that a group of deckhands have established a hideout in this area and have been attacking travelers. Yes, I will do it. Destroy the bandit lair. Where is it? That's the question. It does not show me on the map. Oh dear. I was kind of hoping it would show me on the map, but uh, yeah, well, that's fine. I'm pretty sure I can find it, right? Can I, can I actually find it? I don't know. But yeah, as you can see, this is going to be a little bit problematic. I'm not going to be using the sword or anything like that because the fighting pick actually has piercing damage. 
which I very much like. But yeah, I mean, you can see here, it's only 338, right? 338 gold only from that. However, the cool thing about this is that it actually allows me to sustain my army for a significant, uh, a significant longer period of time. So it's really, really good. Anyway, this guy, I have no idea what his stats are. As you can see, you can't actually see what his stats are, but he is actually willing to join us for 300 dinars. And I'm actually going to be doing that. I'm actually going to be doing that because even though he's um, maybe not the greatest infantry ever, let's actually have a look at this guy. Yeah, I mean, he's got decent gear, actually. He's got decent gear, so technically, wow, yeah, yeah, he's actually not looking particularly bad. Let's take a look at his skills. Yeah, he's got 45, but here's the thing. Look at this guy right now. He can technically become our surgeon. Look at him. He's got three surgery. Three surgery. So this is actually a perfect, perfect character, considering he's only level eight as well. He can potentially become an exceptional medic. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for as well. That's going to be really, really powerful for us. Okay, so I'm going to continue looking around for that hideout. But I will show you the mod uh, mod features just now. Let me just... Can I... Can I can, do you think I can find these things? Oh, uh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm, I'm actually wondering where these where these guys are. I mean, I don't, I don't have great spotting skills. So it's going to take me a little bit of time to actually find... Uh, find them. Ooh, yeah. So we have random events as well, by the way. So <laughs> this is the start of it. You encounter the famed Pool of Dreams, where it is claimed that those with strong minds can look in and get a glimpse of their future. Do you take a look? Take a look into the pool. You gaze into the crystal clear waters for a long time, but you see nothing but your own reflection until you finally decided to leave. What, really? That's it? Oh, okay, I'm actually kind of disappointed now. I was hoping that something would happen, even if it was something negative. <laughs> if it was something negative, then hopefully it was something cool, you know what I mean? Anyway, let's go in here. We're going to obviously try to level up as best as we can. I'm going to try to, um, well, uh, shall we say, I will try to get as much experience as possible so that maybe my forces can actually do something if we end up becoming a mercenary with the Skaven. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be allying myself with the Skaven themselves because that's thematically the most fun thing to do even though uh, I don't I, I, as I say I don't even know whether this is going to be a series so by all means let me know if you want it to be a series and I'll uh, I'll do my best I'll do my best but I gotta say that I actually had a very simple time getting the mod working and I was really surprised by that because back in the day, and I'm talking about years and years and years ago, uh, Warsword Conquest was one of the hardest mods to get running. Absolutely one of the hardest mods to get running. And, and um, I, I, that's, that's through no, no real fault of the, uh, the modding team either. It's because it's just very difficult to implement so many random things into one cohesive experience. And they've done an amazing job with this. They really have. Okay, so I have two prisoners, actually. Uh, two prisoner slots, shall we say. And that's actually really, really useful for us right now. And we're just going to be taking all of those. Thank you. Okay, so let me actually just see. Find and destroy the pirate lair. Okay, so it is actually a pirate lair. I'm wondering whether it spawned somewhere else and I just couldn't see it. No. Doesn't seem like it. All right, so I'm going to assume that it is somewhere along the coast, right? It's probably going to be somewhere along the coast. Okay, so I will show you the modding things in a moment. I am just going to be going into... Um, oh, Brion is actually at war against me because they hate Skaven. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, great. Uh, you annoying people. That is not very nice of them, is it? No, that is not very nice. Okay, well... This is as good a time as any to take a look at this. So, <laughs> there is a huge, huge number of different things. So obviously you've got auto loot here if you want to do that. Diplomacy, well, this is pretty much standard diplomacy kind of stuff, but I absolutely love this. Enable the diplomacy battle continuation? It, why was that disabled? Okay, well, doesn't matter either way. Um, but yeah, you can see all this other stuff right here. And then you obviously have Warsword Conquest settings. So you can enable cheats from inside the game, which is actually really, really nice for those of us that actually like to test things out. Sometimes I used to have uh, cheats on 
a lot of the a lot of the time just because I wanted to test as much as I possibly could in every single mod just so that we could experience pretty much everything that it had to offer or try to experience everything that it had to offer especially in special features not so much in series of course because series are more to do with you know the natural progression of things but in special features yes that was a really really nice um really nice addition there anyway um auto loot disable if disabled auto loot is on oh okay well uh, that's that's perfectly fine i guess charge on death yeah prefer prefer large battles you know all this wonderful stuff horse speed limitation and so on and so forth all this stuff and then we've got tester options right here so combat abilities and enable party spawns and then you can obviously change the faction colors as well so if you don't particularly like the way that the skaven are colored in this sort of like dark red crimson ish color then you can change them to a bright fluorescent pink but please don't <laughs> anyway there we go uh, change your kingdoms to fort troops you can do that too so it's actually really really awesome because what you can do is you can literally just say i want my 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 kingdom my own kingdom to be night goblins for example you can have them be night goblins or pirates or whatever you want them to be and it's the same thing with uh this page right here you can deactivate magic and sieges as well because obviously magic is very very powerful you can create a permanent camp as well select a book to read sort player party by level which is actually very very important actually in my opinion you can retire from adventuring change the name of your party daily npc parting party sorting by level is off I can actually turn that on if we want to, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And then we have split troop assignments. Obviously, this is very much just for, you know, strategies and so on and so forth. Then you have PBOD, which is obviously something that those of us that have played a huge amount of Warband um, mods and so on would know about. And um, these are these are great. These are these are fantastic things. And obviously, some of these options are redundant because they are somewhere else, but it doesn't really matter because they have a number of other ones that are extremely, extremely interesting. I'm actually wondering the Sable Diplomacy Battle Continuation because we already have Battle Continuation enabled in PBOD. So yeah, there you go. And then we have Burspa's Menu. I have no idea what Burspa's Menu actually is. I've never used this ever before. As you can see, you can, it, you can say that you want to turn off the new music. You can adjust the AoE damage modifier, adjust the demonic manifestation level. No idea what that means. And you can, of course, use the cheat to locate special people and or use war modes. And that may cause AI issues, according to that. And there you go. That's it. And then, of course, we do have the reports menu as well, which is obviously very much more standard looking stuff. However, you can look at the troop trees here. There are so many troop trees available to take a look at. And uh, for the sake of this video, we're just going to be taking a look at the Skaven. So basically, my whole deal right now is I want to try to get Poisoned Wind Globadiers. I want to get as many of these guys as I can handle. I want to get so many of these guys. And then eventually, I want to level them up into Warp Block Engineers. So I'm hoping that from Clan Rats, they're going to go into Veteran Clan Rats, then Black Rats, and then... Uh, wait a minute no never mind totally wrong i was looking at the wrong section there skaven skirmishers then scryer gunners then poison poison wind globadiers that is what i'm hoping that we will be able to do there's a bunch of reference material there as well if you want to go with that and you can also look at the faction relations which is extremely detailed and extensive as you can see right there too yeah there's a huge amount. There is a huge, huge amount to look at in this mod. And don't even get me started on the fact that there is a magic system as well as an activities place as well. So for example, you can go to visit, you can buy a ship, you can get, go to magic schools, tournaments, there are quests to do as well, and all kinds of wonderful, wonderful things. So I have 60 days to find this hideout, and I'm very much hoping that I will be able to do that. Where is it? Where is it? Because I don't see any pirates actually nearby to me right now. We've got some deserters right there. Do you think I can actually beat these deserters? I'm not entirely sure. I did level up. So what do I want to spec into? At the moment, I'm actually thinking that I will spec into agility. I know that may seem a bit weird, but we're going to do that. And we'll spec into athletics and I'll, I'll, I'll put some 
put some one-handed skill up because I am going to obviously be using a one-handed for a little bit of time. Okay, so are these Berserker Gores actually really dangerous? Because if they're dangerous, I might very well be walking into my death here. And that would be very, very problematic. I mean, it says here that the renown value is 7 and that we have a battle advantage of 0. So I'm going to assume that the enemy is not that strong. Um, but I don't actually know what level the Berserker Gores actually are. So who knows? Maybe it's going to be a huge problem for us and we're just going to end up losing and dying and then it's going to be terrible. But, I mean, that's the risk that we take, isn't it? That is indeed the risk we take. Let's have a look and see... Do they have ranged weapons? No. Nice. Oh, they've got ignore pain. Okay, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So, oh yeah. There's also that. There is a... Um, oh, are you serious? Okay. I'm getting out of here. Run. Yes. Get out of there. You've retreated from the fight. Yes, I have. Thank you. Okay, let's leave straight away. Let's go into uh, this place over here because before they get me. All right. <laughs> Oh my. Yeah, that was not a good idea. That was not a good idea. All right, note to self. Do not attack Berserker Gores. They were absolutely monstrous. Very, very hard to kill. Uh, escaped Slaves, on the other hand, we would probably be able to deal with them, but most of my forces have been knocked unconscious, so I probably won't be able to do anything against them right now. So we're just going to continue looking for the pirate's hideout. I'm actually kind of surprised I haven't come across it just yet and I've gone almost all over the place. So I'm actually wondering whether it is actually here somewhere. Uh, it doesn't seem like it actually. Look at that. No, it doesn't seem like it. All right. Well, I'm actually kind of stumped. All right, so I actually did manage to find the pirate lair. And you know what's really funny? I think that I probably saw it beforehand, but it either wasn't on screen at the time because I had my camera too far in, or it was just very quick because um, this is where it is. So I went over the bridge here, right? And I was going along the coast, so it may have very well been that I just missed it. Which would have been sad, but there you go. Apparently, maybe that was the case. Anyway, here we go. Let's do this. So, this is another wonderful thing about Warsword Conquest. And uh, generally, mods that put in a huge amount of effort, they have so many different scenes. And these scenes are incredibly detailed. I mean, look at, look at exactly what's going on here. I mean, look at what we actually have to do here. We run through this environment. Obviously, this is... As far as I'm aware, at least, this is not featured in anything else uh, because obviously it's been a while since I've played uh, Warband mods and generally w whether I've actually gone into uh, Bandit hideouts or whatever. This, well, they're, they're giving some decent experience, actually, these fellows. They're giving some decent experience. So let's actually just have a look here. Okay, so there's three enemies. I'm actually not entirely sure if they have... They're not actually shooting at me right now, which is quite funny. Do they even have guns? That's the question. I mean, pirates should technically have guns, but maybe that's not going to be the case. I don't know. We'll see. Can I shoot them from here? Yes, I can. 50 damage. Nice. Okay. Actually, really, really good. I'm pretty sure that guy literally has, what, probably 2 HP remaining or something like that. So that's really nice. Can we do some more damage? No, nope, I cannot, apparently. Yeah, so my clan rats are actually not even entirely bad. They are very good at what they do when it comes to actually... Um, keeping people uh, keeping people back okay come on now yes I can actually defeat this guy oh yeah by the way by the way I cannot disable these arrows right so you're going to actually be seeing these arrows on the screen for the foreseeable future unfortunately I'm not a big fan of the arrows mostly because I'm not actually used to it um, so I, uh, I I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. There is no option for it as far as I can tell. Maybe there is an option, but uh, maybe I missed it. I don't know. But from what I can see, there isn't. So it's just going to have to stay on, and then that's it. I'm pretty sure it is not actually a... Um, uh, it's not a Warsword Conquest problem, but it is more a WSC problem. Um, because, yeah... <laughs> That's it. Anyway, look at this. Look at this. We've just gained so much loot, and I cannot wait to take all of it. Look at that. Oh, yeah. 
Now this is also what I'm talking about when it comes to the mod being amazing because they actually have put in a massive amount of effort to making regular random tasks and various bandit activities worth it. They've made them worth it instead of them being things that are just like, well, who big who cares kind of deal. You know, they've made them worth it by tweaking the, the prices and so on and so forth relatively nicely. Oh, is that Slide of Skaven Blight right there? It is. That is so funny. I'm actually quite... Uh, wait, wait, now, here's the thing. I actually want to know, anyone out there, is this actually a character in Warhammer Fantasy? Or is this named after my character? I don't think so, right? I don't think it's named after my character because if it is, then that's that's very, very, um, very flattering. But obviously, if it is a character in Warhammer Fantasy, then, well, excuse me, um, because I, I, I don't know. I'm going to actually Google it after this. I am literally going to Google it after this and see whether it is an actual character because I'm pretty sure it will be. There's no way that they're going to put in a character of mine, that's for sure, but... Yeah, who knows? I don't know. So I'm just, I'm literally asking. I don't know. I'm going to Google it anyway, so you don't have to tell me. But if you want to, then by all means. Anyway, um, yeah, Skaven robe. So these th these things are just for humans, right? These things are just for humans. So I cannot wear these pieces of armor. So that's just something to, uh, to bear in mind. Otherwise, I am actually going to be selling a lot of this other stuff, like the well-made ale, the fine butter, the fine furs, and so on. Because look at how much money we're making right here. The well-made sausages and the fine sausages, fine smoked fish, fine date fruit, basically anything with the prefix fine, um, that's going to be really, really useful for us. Um, same with fresh pork and fine cabbages, there you go. Because any single thing that has the prefix fine or masterwork or whatever, that is literally just going to provide you with a higher than average amount of money the ratio of the money is going to be so much better. So it's very, very lucrative to look out for those kinds of things. Anyway, there you go. 4,900. I can now go into the tavern and we might be able to find someone to actually join us. A ransom broker. Oh, okay. Well, that's actually not particularly useful. I want to sell the prisoners 60, 60 gold. All right. Yeah. And we got Erasmus here. We got Gulaks as well. Oh, this fellow. Yes. He's going to join us, and what's really cool about this as well, they've added this additional little mechanic that if you're recruiting someone of your same race, you pay 50% of the original cost. And so, as you see right here, Mr. Measles, I, uh, I ma managed to get him for 150, which is actually super nice. Um, otherwise, apart from that, I'm not entirely sure if Erasmus is any good. Gulax, I don't know whether he's any good either. I guess we might as well get him. I mean, the funny thing is, if he's, only, if he's joining us for 300, that's not really bad. Oh, wait a minute. I could use a good trainer in my crew. Welcome to my company. A thousand gold. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Why not? If he, if he is indeed a really, really good trainer, then we might as well get him. And I've leveled up once again. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put in that extra point in agility, extra point in weapon master right here. And we'll go for some more one-handed skill, as you can see. And uh, technically what I could do now is I might be able to purchase a Warplock pistol. Yes, almost. I can almost purchase a Warplock pistol. I really want to get one of these because you can actually fire, as far as I remember at least, you can fire six times before reloading. And instead of my long barrel pistol at the moment, which is obviously allowing me to shoot once and then reload. So it would be amazing if I could get the warp lock pistol. So I will be doing that. Also, here's a heavy ball and chain if you want to actually create a character in the uh, in the vein of my goblin character back in the day. Uh, yeah, that, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. So much damage coming out from that thing. And then obviously you have starves and you have the Giselle classic weapon as well if you want to use one of those. Um, for me personally, I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to use the standard thing. Um, you could buy a ship there as well, and then you also have taverns, and um, yeah, well, we've already gone in there. However, there is actually a job that we can go for. One of the merchants here is looking for a herdsman to take his cattle to the market at Kislev. He's willing to pay us 602. That's not actually that much, which is kind of sad, to be honest. I would like to show you the dungeons. So what we're going to do, oh yeah, look at my trainer skill, just, just going off right there. Really, really nice to see that immediately. And so look at that, we're getting some really nice additional people here now. 
Um, so yeah, let's actually have a look at Gulags. I don't know what become my champion means, by the way. I have no idea what that means. Shall we press it? Let's press it. I will fight for you. I no longer need you to be my champion. Okay, that's kind of weird. All right, wait a minute. W what? Does Did it just go away? Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm not entirely sure what happened with that. I hope that the... Um, I hope that the uh, the option is going to come back at some point, but um, okay, yeah, there you go. Uh, apparently it's gone now. Hopefully it will come back in a matter of time. But yeah, as you can see, Gulax is relatively low level and he's pretty terrible in regards to his stats. However, if we take a look at Erasmus right here, let's have a look. He has how much in trainer skill? He has eight in weapon master, six in trainer yes six in trainer what an amazing guy he's gonna literally level up our forces so incredibly quickly all right that is exactly what we love to see okay so did i actually oh yeah we actually destroyed this so we actually need to go back and speak to that fellow um i actually want to go into the dungeon here but unfortunately i'm not going to be able to do that because we do need to find that beast lord guy um first of all oh he's probably here isn't he oh yes hello there sir where are you you are here somewhere i'm pretty sure there you are. Okay, Gorthor the Beast Lord. We meet again. There we go. And he's he's he literally <laughs> You see exactly what I'm talking about? They have made it so that this is actually lucrative. This is actually really really powerful if you just get a a nice uh, a nice task right here. There we go. And uh, technically we can do another task for him if we want to. What does he what does he have here? Okay, so yeah, we can actually go and collect some rents and so on and so forth right now, but I'm not going to do that right here because I personally would prefer to do tasks for the Skaven rather than tasks for the Beastmen because we're not actually a part of the Beastmen right now. Anyway, so this guy actually is also a person that does first aid, surgery, engineering, and so on and so forth. And um, we have this fellow who's also doing that, but he has more intelligence. Antrax has more intelligence. So Measles is going to have to do something else. He's going to have to be a uh, strength-based character or something along those lines. And um, yeah, that's probably what we're going to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably good enough. Um, because he already has 14 strength, I'm actually kind of thinking that we might pump his intelligence a little bit. Because if we pump his intelligence, we can get him some additional power strike and iron flash. I think that's probably going to be more effective... However, I'm also thinking about Weapon Master right here. Okay, you know what? Let's go for Weapon Master and Power Strike. There we go. And then we can level up his pole arms. He is actually using a pole arm at the moment, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, he's using a Skaven Spear, as you might expect. I'm going to steal his Skaven Feet Cloths as well. And I'm actually going to steal his Heavy Clan Armor too, because that actually makes me significantly more powerful. And, um, well, I don't really like doing that kind of thing, but... It is going to help us a great deal in the dungeon. So we're going to go in there in just a moment. So here we go. This is our first time in a dungeon. So because these modders are extremely conscientious when it comes to providing the player with a number of, you know, helpful tips and, and information and all that wonderful stuff, they've provided us with a guide. So as you can see here, every level contains a sometimes hidden chest. Higher difficulty means harder enemies and a better chance of better loot. Longer dungeons tend to give a better reward for completion. Looting skill now adds a small chance of getting better end treasure, and high level players and companions will attract worse enemies. In other words, harder enemies. Gunshots, explosions, large companions, and summoning all have a chance of attracting enemy reinforcements. Gunshots! Oh. Oh dear. Okay, gunshots. That's that's kind of harsh. Yeah, so what you can also do is the uh, dungeon modifier goes from 1 to 10, right? And right now it's at 1. 1 is the hardest and 10 is the easiest. I'm joking. It is not that it's not like that. I just wanted to seem like I was very good at the game. No. <laughs> no, you know that's a lie. Anyway, no. Dungeon difficulty obviously 1 is the easiest and 10 is the hardest. I was just kidding. Anyway, so yeah, you also have enemy selection here. Classic random or focused. I don't know what the difference is, but it doesn't really matter. We'll just go for classic random. And you can choose 3 companions to join you. You don't have to take actual companions. Okay? You don't have to take actual companions. You can take um regular troops. 
if you want to do that. And for me personally, I think what I'm going to do is I'll take Erasmus just because he's actually kind of good, I think. And I'll take Gulags and I'll take Antrax. And that's what we're going to go for. There we go. And now we can, yeah, this is our adventuring party, as you can see right here. And we're going to enter the dungeon. So first of all, the best thing that I can do is not use my, um, not use my pistol. Okay, come on, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Thank you. Okay. Oh, we're actually doing relatively well because we're up against the wharves. Uh, this is actually, okay, this is a bit unsettling actually because I wasn't expecting to fight dwarves, that's for sure. I was thinking to myself, I'll probably, I'll probably fight some Skaven or something, but no. Anyway, there you go. As long as I don't use a gun, I should be fine, right? Uh, yeah, we also have to find the chest. And there are going to be enemies coming this way. I'm just going to see if there's a chest over here. Because you never know where it's going to be. Sometimes it's hidden, sometimes it's not. Oh, I can go this way if we want to. No, I'm not going to go there just yet. I want to see... Um, can I go up the ladder? Can I actually go up the ladder? I'm pretty sure I can go up the ladder, right? I'm pretty sure I can. Yes, I can. Okay. Ooh, but you see exactly what I'm talking about. This is completely random, by the way. This is completely random. Something that I have never, ever seen before. And, um, you know, this is just amazing. You know, it, the, these kinds of situations... Ah, there's the, there's the chest. These kinds of situations are exactly what I love in these kinds of games. Oh, hello. What is this? Look at that. Wow. Okay, if only I was a vampire right now, hey? If only I was a vampire, but it doesn't matter because I can literally sell this for 5,500 and obviously the coat of plates is available too. So look at that. That's absolutely incredible. And we can also then make our way up here. I actually don't know. Are there two different ways to go? I'm actually wondering whether there are two different ways to exit this particular area. I don't think that is indeed the case. I think there's just one. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just downstairs. Okay, so it's really, really good that we actually came this way, to be honest. I think that is super, super nice. So what we're going to do now is we'll just go down there and then we'll go into the next zone. And here we go into the next dungeon. All right, here we go. Okay, so we've got to remember, do not use my gun. Do not use my gun. If I use my gun, it has the ability to draw reinforcements, and we do not want that. Now, you've got to bear in mind as well, by the way, that there is a certain calculation that is taken into account when dealing with companions being added to the dungeon party. And the calculation in question is to do with the player's level and the companion's level. So basically, as far as I'm aware, the calculation goes something like player level and companion level uh, together divided by three, I think? Or is it the dungeon modifier, dungeon difficulty modifier? I, I don't know. You have to check the wiki, all right? You have to check the wiki and then you'll be able to see the exact calculation if you are interested. Obviously, all I'm trying to tell you right now is that if you do take a bunch of high-level companions, let's face it, there are some extremely powerful companions in the game. But that means that you're then going to be facing exceptional enemies at the same time. So it is recommended if you're at the beginning of the game and you get super lucky like I have and you get some amazing loot. And by the way, here's the chest. Um, oh, what? Are you joking? Look at the armor. Look at this armor. Wow, that is selling for an insane amount. Um, but yeah, anyway, as I said, if you get really lucky and you make a huge amount of money or you're just really good at the game and you can make money however you want then you find one of the best companions in the game and then you think oh that's gonna be so easy for me to go into the dungeon next time well if the companion can solo that dungeon um, or do enough damage by themselves to be able to win the day uh, without your assistance then by all means you know then you can easily do that but it's just a, a precaution just a warning from me right there and indeed a warning from the modding team as well because they say hey be be careful you know be careful in uh recruiting these really really high tier companions because they are going to then have um various issues or shall we say you you might have various issues while dealing with these things i actually kind of hope that my forces are not going to get murdered here okay here we go oh there's a goblin uh not not not, not a goblin a chaos dwarf what okay uh, that's actually kind of interesting uh, now, I'm pretty sure that this is not the way to go. Or is it? 
because I'm thinking that the chest is over here. Ah, no, 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 no. Okay, don't get, don't get, don't get, don't get fooled right now. No, 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 no. We're going to be a bit careful about this. Oh, no, the hobgoblin is down here. Are you joking, sir? Okay, I'm just going to, just going to murder him. I'm going to murder him very, <laughs> very feebly. <laughs> uh, but we're fine, we're fine. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I, here's the thing. I have no idea how long the dungeon actually is. So this might very, very well be a, um, well, I can only hope that this is going to be the final level. If it isn't, then we might have some problems. Uh, because if it's up to me, well, I might not be able to beat all of these goblins by myself. Let's just say that. Because my other companions have been eliminated now, which is not very good. But we can kind of force them into a bottleneck situation here. I'm kind of thinking that maybe I want to use my gun. Oh, no. Oh, sir, sir, help me. Uh, Kill him. Kill him. Yes, kill the Chaos Dwarf. Kill the Chaos Dwarf. Yes, there we go. Nice. Oh, oh, yeah, kill him. Come on, uh, Erasmus. Yes, Erasmus, you're still alive. Okay, I didn't know who it was for a second. Okay, nice, nice. He's absolutely murdering. This is great. Oh, he leveled up. He leveled up. Okay. Ooh, and I'm not even using my gun. I'm not even using my gun, and there are so many enemies. This is crazy. All right, so I think this should probably maybe be the end. I don't actually know. What's that? Oh, it's just a club. Okay, I'm looking for a chest. I'm looking maybe up here. Mm, no, no. Is that a chest over there? Is, 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 that, is, that, is that counting as a chest? No, this is just a, a bench or something. Okay. Mm, I know for a fact, or at least I think I know for a fact, that uh, they do say that there is a guaranteed chest in every level. Um, at least that's what I thought I saw. Um, and in which case, that means that I've missed it. So I'm going to search for it. Ah, there it is. Okay, we found it. Look at this. Okay, so obviously, okay, yeah, look at this. Okay, fine, fine. This is slightly more, uh, you know, in keeping with our level in terms of the, um, you know, the armor that we've just gained right there. Uh, or or should I say, in terms of the loot that we just gained there. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously we can't get amazing gear every single time. I mean, it's all randomized most of the time, isn't it? I think so. Um, but yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about when I say that I feel like this mod has come so far and it still manages, I mean, li literally, li literally, okay, it doesn't feel overwhelming. I mean, yeah, sure, Warsword Conquest was always a little bit overwhelming because of the amount of craziness that you would get yourself into. I'm probably going to die here, actually. I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve victory here. Uh, oh, Erasmus might actually might actually beast for us. He might actually beast for us. He might. He might. Um, I kind of want to use my gun here, but I can't. Oh no, I'm dead. Oh, Erasmus got killed as well. All right, well, there you go. Okay, uh, but there you go. There, there was a dungeon. That was a dungeon. I would have loved to have actually won that, but you see how long it can actually be. I believe the length of... Um, length of the dungeon was medium I think what didn't it say medium or something like that I'm not entirely sure but it doesn't matter nevertheless because we keep all this loot we keep all this loot that we just got and I'm going to be selling basically all of it and I'm then going to see if we can maybe buy a workshop or an enterprise or something like that I feel like that could be extremely powerful for us maybe I actually don't know I have no idea. But yeah, you can see here that I can sell all this stuff. Technically, I don't have to sell the Crude Chaos Champion armor. Even though it sells for the most out of all of the pieces that I've gotten, I technically... Mm, I, I, I don't know. Here's the thing. I could give that to one of my characters, right? I could give that to Erasmus, for example, who was an absolute monster, and he could actually wear it, as you can see. He can actually wear it and do really, really well with it. However, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Sure, why not? Why not? We'll, we'll, just, we'll just leave it with him and we'll see what happens. Maybe it's actually going to be good for him. Uh, the pit fighter armor is not that good. So I'm just going to leave um, Antrax with this. And uh, yeah, so we don't actually... Apparently now we don't have enough to be able to purchase a, um, an Enterprise, which is actually quite sad. Um, let me just see here. 
how much is okay so it actually tells you how much profit you're going to get without even without even you know spending anything which i absolutely love so yeah as you can see the weavery and dye works is going to give us 1900 <laughs> oh that's crazy yeah so technically that is the best however i think i might actually go for the tannery because it's only 6500 and i would be able to buy this immediately so it says here, buying more than one en one of an enterprise type will flood the market and likely reduce profits to below these estimates. In other words, that's a thing that the modding team have done to, uh, shall we say, more keep in line the um, <laughs> the thing that a lot of people would do, which is basically just spam buy Weavery and Dye Works. So if I do buy a tannery here, that's actually not so bad because if I, if I buy a tannery, it means that you know, next time I might be able to buy a Weavery and Dye Works. So I'm going to buy a tannery here. There we go. Sounds sounds good to me. I think that sounds good. And we now have still about 2,000 gold remaining, which is relatively nice. I like that quite a bit. All right, let's go into the tavern here because we never know whether, whether we're going to find some people that we might be able to uh, recruit or something like that, or maybe not in, in this case. Yeah, well, that's that's a little bit sad, isn't it? Okay, well, there you have it. That is a pretty nice look at the new Warsword Conquest. This obviously has been out for quite some time, and i got to say I'm pretty disappointed that I didn't actually uh, revisit it earlier because it is immense and amazing, and it is definitely something that you should check out straight away. Obviously, if you can, um, if you don't have warband i mean i'm not sure why you wouldn't at this point it's been on sale so many times i guess but if you don't have warband just i i would recommend getting it on a sale because obviously i mean you know right i think it's isn't it still like 15 15 dollars or something like that without a sale i don't actually know how much it is um you know base value or whatever but you should get it on a sale it's only going to be about four dollars five dollars or something like that i'm actually not entirely sure about that let's see who this guy is he's going to join me for 300 you have insane gear this guy has insane gear for such a for such a cheap companion look at him he's using dark elf armor they've got such good armor they really do every single time and uh yeah he's using a glaive and everything as well which is going to be super super fun to see so erasmus obviously leveled up as well so um he's obviously a trainer but here's the thing i don't actually even need to get him additional trainer skill because he's got six and there's no point in me actually pumping his intelligence any further there's just no point in me doing that because well I'm going to have to get it to 18 and above. So I'm, I'm going to have to actually get it to 21 before I can put an additional point in trainer. So the best thing for me to do right now is to actually level up his agility skill and then just get him another point in iron flesh. And that's pretty much it. And then we'll just level up his, um, I don't even know what, what is he using? He's using a two handed slash one handed. Oh, okay. Well, that's actually perfectly fine. So he's basically using a two handed right now. All right. But yeah, as I say, if you don't have Warband and you want to get it, get it on a sale, get it from somewhere cheap if you can, and then just get this mod straight away and have a whale of a time because I cannot imagine how amazing this is going to be if you decide to uh, play as any of the factions. I personally think that any of these factions with the new redesign of the Lizardmen territory as well, because I, I don't know whether you've noticed, but the Lizardmen territory is very, very different now. And you can see here that we have the Undead Pirate Kingdom down here as well. So that's completely different. And then you have the Nippon colonies over here as well. And you've got obviously Chaos up here and the Chaos Dwarves. So Chaos Dwarves have been added. I, do, I don't think they had them before. And then obviously you have Kislev, regular Dwarves, Vampires, and so on huge amounts of different different parties and races and so on and so forth to play with and oh i leveled up so many times what oh yeah i forgot to actually level up before we went into the dungeon well that was a bit, bit of a mistake on my part wasn't it oh well never mind it's fine um so what we're gonna do is well i actually have no idea what we're gonna do i guess we'll just level up my agility some more right so i guess i'll just go for 15 agility 12 strength and we'll just go for Weapon Master right here. We'll go for some more Athletics. I feel like Athletics is actually pretty important. And we probably want to go for some more Power Strike too. So let's go for Iron Flesh Power Strike. We'll keep Athletics at 3 for the moment. 
and I can actually level up my firearm skill. Actually, that that seems like a bit of a waste, doesn't it? So I'll go for strength once again, power strike, and we'll just go for full power strike here. And then what we'll do is we'll go for one-handed. A lot of one-handed skill, because look, look at how much I can actually pump this up. It's really, really good, actually. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. If you would like to see a full series, if you want to see more of this, then by all means let me know, you know, do all the wonderful stuff to the video to let me know that you want to see more. So, you know, the stuff that you want to do, you want to click that little button down there and you want to comment or whatever, maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't, I don't know. But if you don't want to do any of those things, that's absolutely fine because you should play the mod. You should play the mod and there is a link in the description to that as well. And it's super, super simple to install. I had no issues with it whatsoever, which is actually really quite remarkable for me. Usually I do, but otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.